In this video, we are going over soccer tips for center defensive midfielders. Hey guys, it's Dave here from Simply Soccer where we're helping you to improve your game and stand out on the pitch. Now on this channel, we release daily soccer tip technique and training videos all designed to help you do just that. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon. Now in today's video, I want to go over one of the most underrated positions in all of football, the center defensive midfielder position. I'm going to be giving you some tips on how you can start playing this position more effectively. Number one is to recognize that the reason this position is underrated is because you are asked to be more of a team player, but that doesn't mean your position is any less important. In fact, it can be one of the most important positions on the field. But you have to be disciplined. You have to do what's good for the team, even if that means you're not getting the ball as much as you would like, or you can't go on a mazy run, or you can't shoot as much as you'd like as well. You need to be very disciplined in this position. That doesn't mean you can never attack and make runs, but you need to pick and choose when you do this. You're not going to be making as many runs into the box as a regular center mid or attacking center mid, you're going to be asked to hold back just in case a counterattack happens. But there will be times in the match when you are invited to go forward or maybe take a shot or try that uh, through ball or something of that nature. You just have to make sure you're doing these not as frequently as other players and picking your moments. Next is you need to be very smart and intelligent in this position. One of the things you need to make sure you're not doing is committing too many fouls. Now the problem is you also want to be very physical and be a presence so that other players are intimidated by you and so that they know that they have to be strong up against you. Just make sure you have that happy balance between being very physical but being smart about it. You're not giving away silly fouls in dangerous positions because the last thing you want your center defensive mid to be doing is giving fouls away from the uh, in or around the box, um, giving penalties away, or just being silly and getting sent off or something of that nature. Another thing when it comes to being smart as a CDM is you need to make sure your positional sense is really, really good. You need to be very tactically astute in order to play this position because you need to know where you need to be in certain uh, circumstances. For example, mainly you're going to be in front of your front four, but sometimes you'll go behind them to receive the ball. Sometimes you will cut off certain space so a passing lane is blocked off. Sometimes you will um, be the first person to move toward a certain player so long as the space that you're now moving out of is occupied by another one of your players. You really need to be watching some of the best center defensive midfielders. You can watch the Contes and the Casemiros and the Busquets um, and the Matiches, uh, another guy I really like, um, play this position and you'll see them do this very well. They cover a lot of ground and they make sure that their opposition doesn't have a lot of space to work with. Next is play simple. Like I mentioned in the first one, you are mainly a team player. You are not going to be asked to do extravagant things. You'll be playing a lot of sideway and backward balls. Sometimes you'll be doing forward balls. If you're more of a playmaker type player like a Xabi Alonso or a Pirlo, you'll be asked to probably do some more, you know, really uh, intricate long balls or really accurate ones. Um, but most center defensive midfielders are asked to break up play and dictate the tempo sometimes as well. But for the most part, you're going to be playing very simple passes. Allow the more creative players ahead of you to be the ones that are threading the through balls or going on the mazy runs. You need to know what your job in the team is. And your main job is to receive the ball and start the attacks by playing it into your more creative players and also to break up play when the opposition gets the ball. Next is you need to have amazing awareness. As a CDM, for the most part, you're gonna be seeing a lot of the pitch, but you need to know where everyone is. Because if you receive the ball and the ball is taken off of you, that could be a potential goal for the other team because you're so close to your net and because you're one of the last lines of defense. So you need to make sure you always know where your opposition is. You need to make sure that the striker behind you isn't going to come and nick the ball from you. Because if you have a hardworking striker on the other team, they may try and do just that. And actually, I can tell you that's something I like to try and do when I'm playing is to make it seem like I'm nowhere near to CDM and then to try and take the ball off him when he's not aware that I'm there. So make sure you're always looking over your shoulder, make sure you're always scanning the field so you know where your teammates are, so that you can play a quick ball to one of them if you need to, and so that you know where your opposition uh, players are, the opposition players are, so you're not losing the ball or playing the ball 
to someone who shouldn't be receiving it. And here's another one that isn't mentioned as much, but it's communication. As a CDM, you want to be one of the most vocal players on the pitch. Now, there are other positions that may be more vocal than you, like I like a vocal goalkeeper, for example. But as a CDM, again, you get to see a lot of the pitch in front of you, meaning you need to be organizing your players sometimes. You need to be telling your other midfielders who to be covering and what space to be occupying if they're not doing it. Be a commander. Be like a Patrick Vieira. Um, be like a player like that who is going to basically command his troops and make sure they're in position and that they're organized. There's nothing wrong with communicating or telling your teammates what to do in certain situations as long as it's effective communicating. One mistake I see a lot is players will communicate for the sake of communicating, meaning they'll just yell anything when it doesn't really make much sense. Make sure if you are communicating, it actually has something to do with the situation and it's going to be helpful and you're not just yelling in order to yell. And guys, thank you once again for watching. Please like and share this video if you enjoyed it or got something out of it. Please make sure you subscribe if you are new to Simply Soccer. And I will put two videos up on the screen here to help you to keep learning and improving and becoming a better player. Thanks once again, and I'll see you in tomorrow's video at 5 p.m.